Welcome to the second episode of Series 43, everyone. Before we get to the show, we've got some announcements. First, thanks for your patience. These last couple of weeks, I have been rushing to get the house ready for selling, and it paid off in that we got a really good offer and accepted it. So now we are in the six-week lull of slowly getting things packed and ready for our move at the end of October. I'll likely be able to still record things during this time, and get things edited without too many issues at least. We'll see. We still have to record October series, and it's already mid-September. It's fun that we were just getting everything together, and then everything just bowls us over at once. Amelia is getting her surgery on her other hand this coming Friday, so that should be recovered a couple weeks past that with luck, but we still should be able to take care of what we need to in a mostly on-time manner. Uh, we'll update you more next time. As mentioned in the last episode, September is International Podcast Month! I'm also so excited to get to experience such a wide array of podcasts and collaborations during this month. And this September is going to be a treat! Coming up this Thursday, September 16th, my first episode will be releasing. I played in a game of Employee of the Month, uh, a game where you play normal people doing uh, normal job stuff at a normal job uh, where nothing weird happens whatsoever. Don't worry about it. Well, maybe. It's very entertaining. It has some great music and sound effects production and has a phenomenal cast of players. The second game I helped with is the very next day, Friday, September 17th. Richard Kreutzlandry runs a game of Lobsters and Feelings, a Lasers and Feelings hack that he wrote, running an underwater adventure set in the world of Yun Justice. Uh, I did the editing and music direction for the episode, and it turned out pretty great as well. Finally, the game that I ran, Chimera, makes its IPM debut with a blend of superhero, fantasy, and magical girl genres, as well as the musical genre. Uh, this is a fully produced episode with environmental sound design, musical direction uh, done by myself, uh, as well as sound effects added by Faye Onyx from the Writing Alchemy podcast. This is a must-listen to episode, if I do say must so myself, and it airs on September 25th, which is a Saturday. You can go to internationalpodcastmonth.com or at podmonth on Twitter to learn more. The pinned tweet there has links to all the different places you can find episodes, and we will put a link to that and the website in our show notes. That is all to report for now. Life is weird, and next week might also be delayed a little bit. So thanks again for all your patience. Join me back here after the show for the call to action. In the meantime, enjoy our garbage shenanigans as we live our best lives in this phenomenal game. On Character Creation Cast, we created a dark fantasy high school game system with Cortex Prime. Amelia was going a little darker, I was going a little more optimistic, and Cam was keeping a character in mind while helping us through the rules. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. So after that, uh, we want to go to. Uh, choosing distinctions. Mm. Um, we've done we've done the values. Um, we'll leave the other ones for the moment because the next thing we should do is choose the three distinctions that you have. Mm -hmm. And these can represent all kinds of things just to sort of flesh out who you are. Like I said before, um, it makes the most sense when you think about them in terms of each of them being a category. Um, mm -hmm. So if you were to come up with these things, 
and a little bit like how aspects work, they can be um, sayings or they can be statements and things. But the, the clearer you are with them and the more that you can imagine them working for you or against you, the better you're going to end up with a um, good character. Okay. So think about, um, for these three distinctions, the first one being, where did I come from? So you could say um, child or privilege, or you could say backstreet um, brawler. You know, I like using adjective plus noun a lot mm-hmm. because you can imagine how that would be applicable to all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. All right, Ryan, how did you end up at an evil fantasy magical school? <laughs> is the school evil or is it just our clique? Oh, no. <laughs> we're just like a group of bad people. Well, we're, we're, bad kids. we're bad people doing good things, right? I don't know, are we? We haven't decided that yet. <laughs> is it like that? We can save the world with evil. Is it just like that, that descendants thing that, that um, show with all the, all the people? Oh, yeah. Oh, the Disney, yeah. like the Disney. Uh, kids, yeah, like the kids the of the villains or yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> My parents were evil, but I don't have to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But, but we're still using dark powers right. to, to do good things, right? Correct. Right. Well, but the thing is, like, who decides what's evil? That sounds like a social construct to me. <laughs> evil is a social construct. Morality is a social construct. <laughs> That's a great uh, second distinction for you, Amelia. <laughs> oh, God, it is. <laughs> Morality is a social construct. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. Uh, it's perfect. Um, I chose youngest sibling syndrome for my uh, first distinction. Very cool. Uh, which, which tells you a lot. Are you a youngest sibling? You are, aren't you? Yeah. And for the second ones, like your, your attitude or approach to, to life outside of that, like if you were to take another person who had younger sibling syndrome, what makes you different from them in terms of your outlook and personality? That's your second one. Mm. Let's see. What was your first one, Amelia? Uh, I'm still thinking of it. I'm trying to like work backwards here now. <laughs> Also, I want it to be alliterative. <laughs> <laughs> That's my trap. Um, I think I'm going to th- just throw it in. Uh, everything happens for a reason. Nice. I think I want mine to be like, if I just wave my hands around, people will understand. <laughs> oh, my God. Words are so hard. <laughs> I want to be someone who is like deviated from the family norms. Like, hmm. But I don't like the word delinquent because that's not very nice. <laughs> um, so you're talking about black sheep? Yes. Yeah, we could probably just call it that, even though that's not an alliteration. Mm-hmm. <sighs> <laughs> Fine. But yes, that is that is exactly the term that I was looking for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, what was our last question? Uh, the third one is, where is your magical power? So what is the source of your magical power? And I think this would be fun for a school about dark magic because I don't think you want it all to be just like generic dark magic, necromancy or anything. You want it to be like um, you have something, some kind of power is is um, in you or you've got it. Um, mm-hmm. A little bit like warlocks in D&D, you know, how they all have their own little sort of niche. Yeah. And that will then lead to the kind of magic and stuff you can do at the school, which they're trying to train you how to do. Mm. What do I want to be able to do? I went with um, love is a light that blends with the darkness. Well, Ugh, <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> God, that's so you. Ugh, I hate it. Um. <laughs> but it's, it's better than love is a light in the darkness, right? Right. Because because uh, it, it has to absorb that darkness in order to uh, to have the light. Like I was thinking, a good one might be for the, the character that I'm uh, imagining in my head, uh, who comes from a family of basically uh, divine paladins type people, but is not one of them. And it would be something like you know, blessed by the power of primordial, where mm. you know you know that this character has this sort of vast sort of divine channel but is hopeless at it because you know he's the one in the family who couldn't figure out how to do it mm-hmm. hates sports doesn't like you know 
going to temple. Yeah, that would work very well. I want to be, like, powered by anger. I just want it to be like, your hatred makes me stronger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've, got, we've got quite the dichotomy going on there. So you've got rage magic, and Ryan's got uh, the sort of light shadow dichotomy thing going. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. What a mess. I love it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, distinctions have something called SFX, which is special effects. And uh, the, by default, they always have the one called hinder. Hinder is use this as a D4 in order to get a plot point. And otherwise, your distinctions all are rated as a D8. So you might as well just put them all as D8s, and then you have the default SFX for a hinder. Okay. Normally, when you make characters, you pick two additional SFX to spread around your three distinctions. Um, you can pick one of them to be on your second one or two on your third, first one, that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know if we want to go terribly much into that at the moment, but maybe just um, bookmark that as a possibility and we can figure that out later because there's a bit of thinking about what those are going to be. Okay. And now I think we want to get onto the relationships. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, relationships. Uh, you you automatically have one with everybody else in the group, okay. and then you have one with important game moderator characters that you think are useful to have. Okay, that, this is where we can come up with some of those people. So you start out with a D six and all the relationships that you would have. So uh, each of you would have a relationship with the other character. Okay, you would have a relationship with Todd, who is my stupid paladin kid. <laughs> and then let's say there are three teachers or staff or someone at the school that are important to all of you. Um, mm. Maybe each of you can come up with someone and then, then the third one I'll just assign. And then we'll, we'll put dice onto these characters in a minute. Okay. okay. All right. Make We're going to have to come up with names soon, aren't we? Oh, oh God. I think I put the books away too. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I cleaned. Oh no. Um I'm trying to think like what subjects they would teach at a school like this. Is it a modern day or a fantasy setting? What is the actual time? Or is it Victorian or something like that? Oh, that's a good question. Mm. I mean, all we've defined so far is that there's like a mundane and there's a magic. Yeah. So, I, I would like I would like the school to be very mundane. Mm-hmm. So it would be a very good backdrop for all the mundane scenes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and for the the teachers and and almost all the students to be relatively mundane as well. So is this like a modern setting? Yeah, I think we could do modern, or we could do um, could be a boarding know, school, which is there's something yeah. a little bit Hogwarts about it. But I think that the the trick here is that it's not actually a magical school. It's it's right. Okay. It's a finishing In that school, case, perhaps. My, my teacher is going to be an English teacher who thinks that they're really cool and they're like really reaching the students with their like cool lingo <laughs> and they're not cool at all. <laughs> and they're just like embarrassing themselves, but like they think they've got it down. So you should both write down English teacher as one of the relationships. Okay. Uh, what else do we got? Um, Gosh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, the school counselor. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, and I'm gonna choose. I think the physical education uh, coach character. Okay. So the nice. school sports coach, I guess. Yeah. There are so many opportunities for bad things to happen in uh, phys ed that. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I hate a gym class. <laughs> and again. Uh, phys ed, another huge trope in Magical Girls, uh, mm. at least with sports, right? I guess gym coach is better than sports coach because it is gym, right? I mean, so yeah, I think gym coach. Yeah. yeah, I think that they're all like, I don't know, I, f- I feel like every gym teacher I ever had was like also the football coach or right. also the basketball yeah. coach. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because you can't pay enough people to get to a school to do that. Um, mm-hmm. Right, right. No, you'd have to raise taxes. We're not going to do that. That's a whole no. other thing. I want to throw out one more person. <laughs> that is the, the principal of a school. I think we need to have them as a relationship. Okay. Yeah, I agree. 
So the way this will work is that everyone on that list is a D6 to start with as by default. Mm -hmm. And in the next step, you will be able to assign... Oh, no, we'll make it easy. Um, make One of them will be a D10, and one of them will be a D8, and the rest will be D6s. So step up. Oh. Step up one to a 10. That's your absolute most strongest connection. It does not have to be with the other player. Mm -hmm. And one is an eight, which is a strong connection, but not necessarily all that overpowering. And in the game, these can go up. These can go up in the game, too. Yeah, Ryan, I'm going to put you up to a 10, because I just think that that would be... Okay. That would be fun. That would be fun. We can be friends this time. Yeah, let's be friends. That can also be your enemy, by the way. <gasps> okay. Ooh. I'll decide later. Uh, <laughs> all those it just it represents like strong feelings, Correct. not necessarily positive ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Um, and you use that in your in dice pool. In which case, the PE teacher is going to be a D8 because right. I have strong feelings about that. <laughs> use that in your dice pool when you are either um, inspired by them, motivated them, interacting with them, or anything. Um, mm -hmm. If you're doing something because Ryan's character is in danger, you could use it. For example, I like that. Mm -hmm. um, so then I would put you, Amelia, as a D10 probably as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then the counselor, the counselor for a D8. All right. Um, I think that would work out really well. Getting, getting advice on the, on, on how to live life. But like hypothetically. Yeah. <laughs> Just go sit down in the office every day. Hypothetically, if there was a situation <laughs> where something like this was happening, <laughs> it's not. But if it was. Yep. <laughs> oh, you're so creative. <laughs> it's, for, it's for a book I'm writing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So, the last thing we want to do is the magical side of things. And I think this is where we'll get into resources. But mm -hmm. we'll also talk about assets, I think. And um, so you'll have five points to spend on signature assets, stepping up any relationships if you want to do more of them or adding and stepping up resources and the resources in this case are your magical power mm -hmm. right? which is flavored by whatever it is that your distinction said it was mm -hmm. so in ryan's case i think light and dark is kind of like that's the thing um and then you can come yeah. up with cool things that work with that and emily yours is rage right mm -hmm. anger wrath whatever you want to call it yeah. So you have uh, two D6s in a resource, which is the one that we talked about. And you can okay. add two tags to it. And tag is uh, something that kind of describes, you could say, attack, defend, um, control, all that kind of stuff. We've got a list here. I think powers. Powers list is helpful for this because. Um, mm -hmm. Where is it? Attack, sense, movement, control, defense, enhancement. And to begin okay. with, that's the stuff you can do with your magical power. Two of those. Okay, what, what page is that one on? Page 54, and there's some little icons down there under abilities. Hmm. There we go, I see it. So we get to select two of those. Yep. Awesome. And here's what All you right. could spend your five points on, just so you know ahead of time. You can use one point to step up your the two d sixes to two d eights. Okay. You can use one point to add a third die, so it's three d six instead of three two d six. You can spend one point to add a tag, and you can spend one point to create a signature asset at d six and a point to step that up. So there's lots of things you can do with them. If you wanted to, for example, you could spend two points to both step up to d eights and add an extra d eight, so you'd have three d eight. And then you mm -hmm. have three points left. Uh, you could add all the tags if you really felt like having it be super universal uh, or whatever you want. You can even oh, add a whole new resource if you want, but that's going to be um, different kind of magic. And I don't know whether you want to um, do that because it doesn't come with as many tags. Okay, that makes sense. So I started with uh, the light and dark with 2d6, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I chose... Enhancement and attack. Cool for yep. my two tags. Nice. I'm thinking. I think I want to spend two points to step up to three d eight. Yep. For mine, uh, which sounds really nice. 
You can also spend one of these points to step up a relationship by one. Uh, that's taking it away from the resources, obviously, but it's still valid if you don't really want to have a character who's super magical but does want to have more relationship dice. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of things you can do with those five points. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love the amount of options that there are for that. What did you pick for your tags? Enhancement and attack. Okay. I picked attack and control. Ooh. Oh, cool. I like it. Now, just so you know, you can use magic without spending resource dice, I think. Um, but it would mm -hmm. be flavor. So if you do a thing and you're saying, I'm going to do this thing and I'm using a spell to influence something, it, you just aren't using the actual power necessarily. You're just, it's cosmetic. Gotcha. But if you were using the resource to do something extra um, and to do the real powerful stuff, you'd say, I'm spending one of my D8 resource dices or D6s or whatever it is. And then after you roll your dice, for your test or whatever and get a total you would then roll the die and then add that to the total so it actually is very significant and then you would describe mm -hmm. that as being a major spell or a, or a sort of a summoning or however you want um and as long as it fits the the tag that you've chosen then it would be fine so if you were trying to control someone's anger amelia you could do that and say i want to influence them by making them mad you could describe that and roll the dice and try and do it and then you would spend a die from your resource to boost it up. Okay. I feel Very like cool. it's, it's fun to have characters be able to do little simple tricks with their magic and not have to cost them so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until they're doing a thing that's major, you know. That makes sense. I think I'm going to spend one more point to add the defense tag. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I have enhancement, attack, and defense. That sounds really cool. Let's see, what else? Yeah, I think I might add enhancement to mine, which leaves two. Mm -hmm. Did you step up yours and add an extra die to Amelia? Yes. Yeah. Seems to be a pretty valid way of doing it. Uh, so then, if we throw if we throw another point in there, can we go to four d eight? No, I think I always recommend no more than uh, three dice and no higher than d eight okay. for starting characters because you could do that. That makes sense. Advancement. Okay. You said one point to like increase a relationship? Yep. And you can spend a point to create a D6 signature asset, which is a thing we can use uh, even outside of magic. Okay. This is normally where magical girls have like some cat with, that talks. Yeah. I mean, I think oh. I want to create an asset. Goodness. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm going to like really hate this English teacher. I'm going to bump that up to a D8. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just really. Um, I'm going to spend a point to uh, to add a D to go to D8 for Todd, uh, the paladin kid, mm -hmm. uh, who is uh, also part of the contingent of uh, superhero esque whatever we do in the yeah. non mundane side of things. Yeah. Okay. So, so what sort of acid are you thinking about then, Amelia? I don't know. Yeah, it just sounded really cool. It does sound cool. Oh. I I would really love to have a like a magical uh, companion animal of sorts. So I was thinking if I, uh, I would probably spend an asset, uh, spend a point for an asset for something like that. Mm -hmm. So what animal do you have? Yeah, that's a good question, right? It's got to be something mundane that nobody questions when it's around, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, if it's some kind of pet, it's often very good because then that can be used uh, as a, just you just hang it out with them. Um, but the magical side of the pet is hidden from the rest of the world, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. The same with, like, uh, a piece of gear, especially if it could change or is it part of your whole, you know, shtick. So if you yeah. have, like, an amulet. And then the thing is, you get to include that asset in a dice pool if it's appropriate for what you're trying to do. And so sometimes if you've got a pet that's, like, a, a familiar, for example, then, you know... Hey, can I use this carrot, this dice in my pool? Yeah, sure. Are they helping you? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want it to be a cape, but I don't know how to make that helpful. A cake? Like a, cape. a magic magic cape? Yeah. Oh, C A P E. Like a... Not C A K E. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> I thought you said crepe, and I was like, no, those are great, but I don't think that's helpful either. Uh, yeah. No, magic cape. Yeah. I or mean, a crown, like just some kind of accessory, you know. And I imagine that it it does stuff, right? Sure. Probably. Um, 
Um, you can like, put you can... fix onto assets too. Oh, interesting. And and can you like when you advance, can you add uh, things to uh, the assets yeah. as well? And yeah, and when I add more assets, oh, very cool. So kind of like unlocking power as go as you go along. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a cool headband slash crown. I don't know what it does yet, but I'm gonna think about it. Um, I would like to earn that later. You, you've embraced the darkness more than I, so you've become worthy of having the, one of the magical crowns. Okay. Something like that, right? <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna you're not gonna have a pet. No, I'm gonna have a pet. I'm gonna oh, have okay. uh, a, a magical ferret. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, what a good choice. I love ferrets. Um, They're fun. Yeah, magical ferret. So are you finished putting your points in place? I think I so. I think so. And you can use a point to step up the relation, the assets by one to D8 if you wanted to, if you had two points spent left over, but you don't oh. have to. It starts as a D6. One, two, three, four. No, I don't think I only had the one. I think we, I think we both did the same thing. Mm -hmm. We did. Uh so yeah, I think that worked out well. <laughs> yeah. Well then, I think all we need to do now is uh, kind of do the usual biographical and whatever stuff for characters. There's not oh, much no, else. This to is make. the naming part. This is the naming part. Yeah. <sighs> so Cam, you already had a name for for your uh, hypothetical, yeah, hypothetical came, character, well, Todd. Todd, because Todd was named uh, um, by some very optimistic parents who thought that he would be a track star. Hmm. Oh. So does Todd have an asset as well? Does Todd have an asset? Uh, I think. Yeah. Well, because you both have assets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Todd has a, a a bracelet that can turn into a shield. Oh, that's so oh, cool. That's very good. So a shield bracelet. And Todd's power is, like I said, the power primordial, which is which is just a nonsense way of saying he's got a little bit of kind of quasi He-Man stuff going on. Oh, I like that. Um, it's the kind of magic you'd have if you're a really cool paladin, but if you're not a really cool paladin, you don't know what to do with it. You just <laughs> do other things like, you know, yeah. slam locker doors. And <laughs> Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> what, would, what would Todd's, uh, like, t number one value be then? Oh, uh, his is um, Envy, I think. Ooh. He's oh. envious of all the people who have cool magic that is cool and not dumb power primordial magic, which is not cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah. He's the kind who wanted to be, you know, had been born to a family of dark sorcerers or something. And uh, sadly, that was not his lot in life. Oh. <laughs> it's really tough. Yeah. So, yeah, your name, your background, what you look like, where you've been, where you're going, what you're doing, and how you feel. That's the sort of stuff we talk about in the biographical area. Okay. Um, I do – there's a short list of, of SFX that are pretty good default basics, which I think are fun. And you could assign two of those to the distinctions somewhere if you wanted to. Or we could revisit that later if you, want, if you wanted to. I don't think it's a super huge deal. Okay. Did you have a name, Ryan? Still trying to think of a good name uh, for this character, and I'm wondering, um, like, uh, do we all transform uh, to get our magical abilities, or is it something that's more innate within us? Well, I think that's like the magical girl trope, right? Right. Like you have to transform. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Because otherwise, it would be a lot easier to like do things on the down mm -hmm. low. Yeah, it that's sounds true. like you've got your magical form. Which is kind yeah, of like the it, more iconic version of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Do we do we have like a almost like a like a destined sort of group uh, with this, or is this like a uh, um, we're all our own people and we just happen to uh, kind of gravitate to one another <sighs> to fight the bad guys? I feel like we just kind of like ended up this way. Like I don't feel like it's a predestined. Okay, so it, it, we wouldn't need like a a team themed like no because I was gonna names. say that like my parents named me something stupid like Jennifer. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> and I'm like not into that. I'm sorry to anyone named Jennifer. It's not a stupid name, but it's just like not you know 
Yeah, yeah. It's not my necromancer name. So, like, I insist that everybody has to call me Persephone. (laughs) Oh, okay. That makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's no, like, we are all, you know, demigods, children of the gods type thing, or we're all part of, Mm -hmm. we're not all sailors of planets. Yeah. No. No, I don't think so. I do like the fact, though, that there's probably only one representative of whatever power sources that we have at the school because there's only one in every generation who has it, which makes my character even more ridiculous because if he's the one who's got the power primordial, then wow, what a letdown. (laughs) (laughs) Oof. Rough. (laughs) And the whole light and darkness thing is fun because, you know, that's you. You're the one with light and darkness, Ryan. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Don't disappoint your parents. I don't. don't. (laughs) (laughs) It's my time to shine or uh, turn off the light. (laughs) (laughs) Um, <laughs> I mean, like, Loose is a good name. I'll use it. Loose. I think I've got something brewing. Uh, I just need to do a quick uh, thesaurus. I, did I come up with a name quicker than you, Ryan? You did. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's weird. <laughs> the world <laughs> it, is ending. It's it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a record, right? It is. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing I didn't make you name all the teachers and things then, too, huh? I know, right? <laughs> the names aren't yeah, but important. They're like in the mundane world, so it's I feel like it's easier to come up mm-hmm. with All right. names for those, you know. It's that like magical girl superhero wizard name stuff. That's like really Todd. Hard. Todd's a very magical girl. Todd wizard. is like whew. <laughs> Todd the magical girl. <laughs> I like it. I think his name is Tong, a Todd, Todd Braveheart. Oh, love it. Which is not, <laughs> that's his family name, the Bravehearts. Oh, I love it. Did they make that movie after you? I've like, heard oh, that I always get that question. I hate it. <laughs> okay, so my mundane name will be uh, Wilma Valentine. Oh, cool. <laughs> Wilma, Todd, and Jennifer. It's great. <laughs> Perfectly normal, <laughs> mundane people. Mm-hmm. Magical girl team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what's your magical girl name? Mm. Come on, Ryan. I believe in you. I know. Um, why don't they kind of have it be like duo something or just maybe even just duo? Duo is cool. Duo is good. Um, yeah. Yeah, duo is good. I think I'll just stick with duo. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. I got a name. Um, go with uh, she, her pronouns. Oh, yeah. I will also go with she, her pronouns. Todd will go with he, him pronouns, because Todd does not know any better. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Todd. I love him. He's already my favorite. (laughs) I'm just really rooting for Todd. (laughs) (laughs) I I could just see Todd, like... Just rolling his eyes when he has to use the powers of, of light and, and paladin stuff. Like, oh, I wish this could be darkness. I wish this could be cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is just how it works. Uh. <laughs> I also feel like Todd has a lot of himbo energy, and I'm really like... He, he does. Uh, was, was obviously fed all the right kind of uh, foods and proteins growing up and on all kinds of plants. Mm-hmm. Uh, would we'll toss it out when he went to school because who needs to have that G fuel at school? It's terrible. Oh, Todd. <laughs> His parents are That's probably like vegans or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he's vegan and doesn't like that his parents like just have like a massive amounts of cheeseburgers for dinner because they can take it. Mm-hmm. All right. Have we made people? Did we do it? I think you did it. I think we did. I think we did it. Wow. <gasps> I'm so proud of us. I love it. This was so much fun. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I had no idea what to expect going into it, and I, I am thoroughly enjoying this whole process. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, same, like, I didn't really know exactly how we were going to make it work without, you know, when, when there's not a setting, it's always kind of like, mm-hmm, I don't, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know fully what to expect or what I'm what i'm in for but i like what we made i like this this weird Mm -hmm. (laughs) this weird evil not evil team 
I know. <laughs> I think you bring to it also what you know and what you like, and that's a big part of it too, right? It's if if you're right. a fan of certain genres already, you know the tropes, you know the baggage that comes with it. So mm-hmm. I also think that it's good to remind folks that there are many ways to get to the same point um, with mm-hmm. Cortex. You don't have to use the same traits and same things to have a magical girl, dark fantasy high school story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But these were just ones that I threw out there and you could do it differently, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I, I think that this is a game that there absolutely has to be be something for everyone here just because like you get out of it what you put into it Mm -hmm. um like we brought our own exact perfect brand of garbage to this (laughs) (laughs) like like we made exactly what we are about and so the fact that like we could walk in and say hey our thing lately is always making magical girls and necromancers and you said okay let's do that Mm -hmm. here's how um with you know, much thanks to you, zero question on your part of whether that was okay or not. <laughs> um, I mean, that really says something, though, that you can you can just walk in and be like, here is all of my background, mm-hmm. let's make something. Um, I feel yeah, I like this it. is the kind of thing that I could do uh, at conventions and so on if I felt like, you know, spending a couple of hours with a group of people is just, hey, let's make a game. The problem is, with the mm-hmm. more people you get involved in it, the more it gets... Uh, messy uh right. Oh, right. i think this is For a good sure. number of folks the two of you together can really collaborate and make something fun Right, right. Well, mm-hmm. and you know, that's the the thing too is that Ryan and I have been working on this for three plus years, so we know exactly what the other person mm-hmm. is, you know, is into. And so I think mm-hmm. when you start adding more and more people and more and more ideas, it it could get um, complicated and trying to like make everything fit together. Yeah. But this was definitely, it was really nice to be able to take exactly the things that we wanted and, and put them into this and, and get something somewhat cohesive out of it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> we and, never and have was, to find out if it's all the way cohesive. That's not what we do here. Right. But <laughs> we don't have <laughs> to deal it, with the consequences. And it was a lot, it was a lot quicker than I, I thought it was going to be, too, yeah, uh, which yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. yeah, this was super easy. Mm-hmm. Super easy. Cool. I, I'm sure it would have taken longer if it was just you and I, Amelia. Yeah, trying to figure um, it out on our trying own. Trying to figure it out on our own, but uh, w- with uh, with somebody that knows the system, obviously, uh, yeah. Cam definitely knows the system. <laughs> yeah, I would say, Cam, you seem like an expert on the system. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's, that's been said before. And, uh, <laughs> I get that like, I'll a lot. I'll take it. That's I'll, fine. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. That's fine. I think that sounds like a good... <laughs> Um, all I really did, though, was just uh, throw some ideas out there and guide you. I think that the book does have everything we've talked about. Yeah. But mm-hmm. even then, as you can tell, there's tweaks and twists on it that you can put. I don't think I've ever used this sort of combination of things ever before. But um, I will say uh, all of this is your stuff, and it is not mine. And I'm really happy that you guys came up with it. Absolutely. Yeah, this was so much fun. Mm -hmm. Well, Cam, thank you so much for joining us for our Cortex Prime character creation. This was a lot of fun. I'm really glad that you could sit down and do this with us. I enjoyed it immensely. It's always fun seeing what people come up with and how they mash things together. And I certainly think you (laughs) both did um, admirably on that score, even though you came came to it with some strange ideas. I think those strange ideas made it really good. Well, thank you. <laughs> Do you want to remind people where they can find you online? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Boy Monster. You can find me on Instagram at Rusty Cell Sword. I'm also available uh, at all times. Well, not necessarily all times, but New Zealand time uh, on <laughs> various places, including the Cortex Discord, which is uh, you can find more information about that and everything else Cortex at CortexRPG.com. Well, wonderful. Thank you for joining us. And thank you to everyone for listening. You can join us again next week for our discussion episode. Call to action. Yeah, like that. I love this system so much. Uh, The possibilities truly seem endless to craft rules for almost any genre you can imagine uh, or genre blend. And you all know that's completely my jam. Uh, But before we let you go for the week, let's get some of these calls to action taken care of. 
a reminder that September is International Podcast Month. Uh, you'll hear about this next episode as well. Uh, you can find more info at internationalpodcastmonth.com or on their Twitter at PodMonth. A very specific call to action here. Uh, there is a very important election happening in California here in the U.S. on September 14th, uh, which looks like it is today. It's very important that all of our California voting age listeners get out to vote, even if you would be voting no for the recall. Apparently, a lot of folks think you only need to vote if you want the recall to happen, and that's simply not true. We want the vote to have the best turnout possible for an accurate and fair vote, so definitely take the time to exercise your right. Finally, we seriously thank you for all all of your patience and understanding while we work to get our episodes out at the very least in the same week they are supposed to be releasing life has been a lot for both of us and we love making this show and we love that so many of you enjoy listening to it week to week so thank you again uh, for sticking with us well until next time stay safe uh, drink water as Amelia says get vaccinated if you can and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next week. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. 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 Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like A Horror Borealis. A Horror Borealis is an actual play Monster of the Week podcast set in the 1990s in the fictional town of Revenant, Alaska, just south of the nation's least visited national park and way north of everything else. A reclusive small game hunter with a magical secret a young anarchist librarian with a passion for conspiracy theory, and a sensible park ranger with a strong local book club following find themselves pulled together by common threads woven mysteriously into their past when monsters begin plaguing their tiny community. But they soon discover the things they're fighting run much deeper and much closer to home. Tune in for a story about identity, empathy, community, mental illness, and healing, and stay for the beloved local diner.